seated in the presence of the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just give you all the praise, O oh God. Father God, we give you all the glory, Lord. We worship you, O oh God. We exalt you. We, we magnify your holy name, O oh God, because your name is above every name, O oh God. We salute you, Father. Because you're King of kings and Lord of lords. We worship you, God. Because you're sovereign and holy and righteous and just, oh God. We worship you, Jesus, because you are worthy, my God, of all praise. You are worthy of all glory. There is no other God like you. You're the sovereign and holy, righteous, awesome God and Father. And this morning, we just bow, my God, in adoration before you. We bow, oh God, to give you praise and to give you glory and to thank you God for everything that you have done for us, how you saved us, how you have kept us, my God. Oh Lord, we just worship you and we, we glorify your holy name, oh God. Even now, oh God, I crucify flesh, my God. Anything that is within me that is not of you, even now, burn it out by your blood, Lord Jesus Christ. Humble me, oh God. Keep me at your feet, oh God, that your name and your name only may be glorified. Father God, I surrender to your will and to your way even now, oh God. Father God, let your word go forth without hindrance. Let your word go forth, oh God, with authority, my God. And let the hearts of your people be blessed, oh God. We give you praise, my Father, oh God. And we give you glory, Lord Jesus. We worship you. We honor you. And we give you all the glory. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the name that is above every name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, amen and amen. The spoken word this morning is the great day will speak. The great day will speak. And in Matthew chapter 7, 13 to 14, it says, enter by the narrow gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few, my God, who find it. And in Matthew 16, 26 to 27, it says, For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. And in Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Saints of God, we're on a path. We are walking on a path to salvation. And the word of God tells us, and I know we have heard this word before, but I want you to pay attention to what God is saying because everything that God writes in his word is so. There's no either or either. If God says that the, the road to life is narrow, don't think it's not. That is the devil wanting you to think that it's not so. But it is so. And God wants us to understand that as we are sojourning, because this is not where we are, this is not our life, this is just where we're passing through, that it's difficult to walk the narrow path. It is difficult because we're spiritual beings housed in a fleshly tent that is warring against what God wants. Or flesh saints of God, our flesh, my God, gets us into so much trouble. Our flesh, my God, prevents us from submitting to the authority of God. And because of that, we find ourselves on a broad and wide path when God is telling us to go on a narrow path. The narrow path 
is being in subjection to the authority of God. You see, you cannot be in the middle. There is no middle. Yes. I'm here to, to let you know that this morning because people think that, oh, I don't feel like worshiping God, but I don't serve the devil. If you don't worship God, you're serving the devil. I'm letting you know that this morning there ain't no middle ground. You notice that the Lord didn't say narrow is the part and broad is the way and in the middle. It's either or either. It's either you're going to walk the narrow path and walk in that narrow path is that you're going to let your flesh die, you see. You got to you got to be wrapped up in God. You got to be willing to sacrifice because Jesus demonstrated that. That the way through life was sacrifice. He had to deny himself. He had to deny his glory. Yes. We have to do the same. Yes. Don't let people tell you, oh, once you're saved, you're saved. No, that is a lie from the pits of hell. You have to change, you see. Because the spirit of God isn't going to compete with your flesh. If you serve the flesh, the flesh is going to win. Yes. The wages of sin is death. The flesh is sin. And if we submit to the flesh uh -huh. on that great day, yeah. it will speak. Uh -huh. You see, because on that day, when you would stand face to face with God, once you're serving the flesh, you're serving the devil. So you can't expect that your name is going to be written. Uh -huh. My God, in the Lamb's book of life, saints of God, we have to be under the authority of God. We have to be resoluted to slay the flesh. It is full time because the flesh gets us in so much trouble. The flesh gets in the way. When God said, don't do this, the flesh said, no, God will understand you can repent. Lies! That's presumptuous sin. If you know that God says you shouldn't do something and you still do it, that is presumptuous sin. And if you're going to sin against God, presumptuous, it means you don't believe or honor or hear what God has to say. So who do you look like? Your father. Who's that? The devil in hell. You see, people like to nice it up. It ain't no nice. It's either or either. It is either you're on the Lord's side or you're on the devil's side. You don't have a side, you see. You can't say, oh, I'm on my side. Rubbish. If you're working and you're working for yourself, you're working for the devil. If you're working for God, you're working for the kingdom of heaven. It is either or either. This is why when God talked about the lukewarm church, he said he will vomit them out of his mouth because you can't be in the middle. That is confusion. You're either on the Lord's side. Yes. And if you're not on the Lord's side, mm -hmm. you're on the devil's side. Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't feel like coming to church. You ain't doing God a favor. Coming to church and fellowshipping with God is a preparation for you to go to heaven. People want to go to heaven, but they don't want to worship God when they're here on earth. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Now is the time for us to get to know who God is and prepare ourselves. Heaven is a place of worship. And if we don't know how to worship God here, you think that the, day, the great day is going to come and God is just going to say, okay, come into, you don't know him. It is serious saints of God. When you think about it, think about it in the natural, right? We all went to some form of school. Right? We either go to primary school, high school, college, whatever it is. If we just go to school and do nothing. Remember the teacher always have a grade book? You show up, they take your attendance. Are you here? After certain attendance, you get in trouble. Right? Are you here? They teach you. You get lessons. So if you don't show up and do nothing, on the great day of graduation, on graduation day, let's just keep it natural. Because it's the same thing in the spirit. We come to school, sometimes we feel like going, sometimes we don't feel like going. Sometimes we take notes, sometimes we don't take notes. Sometimes we study, sometimes we don't. But when we get the test and the teacher is taking accurate account of everything, and it's all said and done and there is requirements for graduation and it's time, and they said, oh, you can't graduate. You don't meet the requirements. You didn't show up. You didn't study. You didn't do anything. So unfortunately, 
you will not be able to walk across that stage. It's the same thing. Yes. But this is one is greater. You understand? We, 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 I want you to understand. When you decide not to go to school and you know you have a hard life, you're trading something greater in the spiritual realm. When you show up when you feel like showing up, when you study when you want to study, if you don't study God's word, you can't know who God is. It is the word of God that transforms you. That's why the word of God said, I beseech you, brethren, that he said, do not be conformed to this world, but to be transformed from this world by the renewing of your mind and your spirit. You see, people don't want to be transformed. They want to live in the world and live for God. Huh? You can't serve two masters, you see. Either you're going to hate one, and love the other or hate. It don't you know middle ground. It's either or either. You have to choose who you're gonna serve. Because I'm telling you, if you don't put in the work to go after God, those great books we read in Revelation 20 this morning, what did it say? It said, and books were open. Those books can't be compared. You see, the natural books when we have to go graduation and oh, you get an F there, you get an F there, and you're failing and you can't graduate. Ah, you can retake those tests, but you see on the great day. Oh my God. Oh, glory be to God. Glory be to God. Oh, when you fail a test in college and you fail, you can take it again so that you can possibly graduate at a later time. But let me tell you about the great day of God my God the great day of God the white throne judgment of God when it says and books were open and the book of life and the word of God said those who were great and small everybody yes. and you are judged according to your works let me tell you you can't say to God at that time um yeah, you, you can't give me another chance. Can I can, 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 can I get a do-over? Can, can I get some more time, Lord? I, I understand that my name is not there, but give me a little more time. You see, at that point, yes, on that day, it is finished. On that day, it is done. And you know why this is so serious, saints of God? When graduation in the natural is coming, you know that date. You're getting your undergrad, you have four years. You're getting a master's, you have two years. You're getting a PhD, an extra three years. You understand the timing. So you know how much time you have to get it right. Oh God, the word of God said the coming of the Lord is going to be like sweet. A thief in the night. And if the man knew that a thief was coming, he would prepare himself. So now now is the acceptable time of God. Now is the time for us to get our houses in order. Now is the time for us to break up our folly grounds. Yeah. It is time, saints of God, because your life is on the line. And when you're on that day, you can't ask for more time. You can't go to your professor and ask for extra credit or makeup. There will be none. You understand, saints of God? So this is why it's important. Your life is on the line. And the reason why it's, it's so important for us is because we're in a clay container that is susceptible to sin. We're in a body that word of God said, Brother Paul said that the things that we don't want to do are the things that we do. Oh, rich man that I am. So let's not try to pretend that we're somewhere that we're not. Cry out to God and ask him to slay the things that you're struggling with. Be real. Because you see, if we pretty it up and dress it up, the devil is watching us and he's going to send things at us. You understand? To keep us, the word talks about, we read about the wheat and the tears. People of God in the same body, but not all of them are in the body of Christ. You have some counterfeit in there. Why do you think they're in there? They're in there as cancers. They're in there to keep you in your place. So that the power of God 
cannot change you. Keep you in stupor. Keep you in darkness. And letting you know, listen, God understands, man. You have time. Just, just, it's okay. He's a loving God. You don't have to change when the word of God said, be he holy as I am holy. When the word of God said that we have to be spotless and blameless. Now you tell me, if we're supposed to stay how we are, why is God telling us that we need to be spotless and blameless? The word of God said that Jesus is coming back for a passionate bride. A bride that has ordained herself. Has been clothed in the garments of righteousness. This is serious saints. We're taking our salvation. Our eternal life. Lightly. We put more emphasis on the things of the natural. Everybody wants to go to school and get a degree and get accolades. Some man can say, oh, I'm doctor this and oh, I have a master's in this and oh, all of that is rubbish because on that great day, if your name is not written in the Lamb's book of life, you're nothing. On that great day, if God does not say, welcome, thou good and faithful servants, Everything that you think was important to you, that you labored for, is rubbish. Oh my gosh, let's get it together, saints of God. We occupy our times with things that don't profit. What does it profit a man? To gain the world and lose your soul. What does it profit you to spend sleepless nights studying and doing everything when you won't even pick up the word of God? It should be the same energy. Yes. The same energy you give in school and work. You work in a secular environment from men who don't even honor God and they don't even care about you. But you give them 40 hours a week. Where's the energy when it comes to God? Wow. Imagine if we were giving God 40 hours in his word. Mm -hmm. huh. Our lives would not be the same. But when labor for things that don't profit. And on that great day, when we come face to face, the things that we spent our time laboring on will speak. The things of this earth cannot be carried into that life, into that land. So saints of God, it's time for us to get it together. It is, if you understand who your God is, if you understand that we were bound in hell and death because when, when Adam fell, death reigned in humanity. If you understand that the devil had a hold on us, my God, and that, 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 that God sent Jesus to, to go into hell and to rip us from the pangs of death and from the hands of the devil. If you understand what God did for you, then it should be simple. It should be simple. You should have no reservations about going after your God. Just as how you have people have plans and dreams. Oh, I want this house and, and I want to live in this neighborhood and I want this car and I want this job and none of those things are doing anything for your spirit, man. What about, I want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, I want to go into the third heavens and see what Brother Paul saw. Oh, I want to be wrapped up with God. Why don't we have those desires for the things of the Spirit? Same energy. We're spiritual beings living in a natural body. So just as how we want things in the natural, we should want the heavenly things even more. Some people, oh, I want it here. No, no, no. I want to want, I want to know that whatever I do here is gonna make sure I make it there. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world? And to, do you know how precious his soul is? Think about what Jesus, if your soul wasn't precious, Jesus wouldn't have gone through what he went through. He suffered and died for the souls of humanity. He didn't do that so you can't have mansion and do this. Because you know all these preachers that are in the pulpit talking to people about prosperity. And they're not telling them about the wages of sin is death and letting them know that they have a soul to save. That is 
missed the purpose of the cross. False prophets teaching people nonsense and they're slipping on a slippery soul to hell. Because here's the thing, we do not slay the flesh. Jesus said, anyone who comes after me, you have to deny yourself. Yourself, your flesh. Deny your desires. Your desires take back burn to God's will. You put God first. The word of God said, seek ye first. But some of us want to seek God after we get the job and the husband and the children. How can you be so, so casual about that? You don't even know if you're going to live to have a husband or children or a house. Because we're all on borrowed time. So it is important for us saints of God. It is important for us that we do what is right. Jesus paid the ultimate price for us. Your soul is precious. The same energy that you spend with everything you want to do. You ever notice that? How we can find time to do the things that do not profit. We can find time to do that. But when it comes to the things of God, we have all the excuses in the world. We're supposed to show up, we can't even show up. If you invite people to church, oh, long is your church? Oh, how long do you work? You understand what I'm saying? Let's be real, saints. When you invite people to church, oh, um, oh, what time is the whole long? It, as long as the Holy Spirit wants it to go. Why? So think about it. Why when they go on the job interview and they ask you, why you want the job? Why they not ask them, how long will I have to work? Do you get that job? You go to a job and you apply for a job for 40 hours and you have a problem because you only want to be there for two or one. You're not going to get that job. Same energy, saints of God. We're talking about Jehovah God here. You understand? We're talking about a God who holds our breath, but yet we give him sloppy seconds. Oh, what a disrespect. How long is your church? The God who is holding your breath, if he wants to keep you here all day, you should rejoice. Jesus God gives us 7 days a week 24 hours a day for 7 days a week we give man 5 days out of the 7 working for man and we can't find a day whether it's Saturday or Sunday you can't find that day to go into the presence of the one who has kept you for those five days. Who has given you the knowledge that you can perform whether in school or on that job. You find it hard to do all of that. But yet, when your eyes are shut, you want to go into his presence for eternity. My God! We got to wake up, saints of God. The word of God said that while men slept, an enemy crept in. If we don't wake up and be determined to go after our God and to slay and denounce and reject everything you know, open your mouth and be clear. You understand? You got to, you know, you know every one of us know our struggles. Be clear and reject it by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's about time. Yeah. But we just nice it up and God understands. He understands that we are just humans and all this nonsense. When we have victory in Jesus, we have power in Jesus. There is nothing that should have you in a stronghold because Jesus overcame everything on our behalf. So why aren't we on fire for God? Why is it that pastors have to tell you, oh, you need to do this and you, 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 we should have that burning desire. It should be like fire shut up in our bones because we understand what God has done for us. Saints of God, there is going to be a, there's going to be a separation. We read two scriptures this morning. There is on that great day, hallelujah, there will be a separation. God will be separating the wheat from the tear and the sheep from the goat. 
My God, which one are you? Which one are you? Every one of us have to decide whose side am I going to be on? Am I going to be on the Lord's side and do as God wants me to do? Because that is my purpose. That is my all. It's to love God, obey his commandments. Because that is my all. To fear the almighty God. Am I going to do what God wants me to do? Or am I going to allow the enemy to use me? So that I can end up into the lake of fire with him. The devil is a liar. That will not be my end. This is the real deal, saints of God. We are sojourners. We were not created for this. We were created to be in the presence of Almighty God. But it all hinges on us. God has done everything for us. He has done everything for us. But it's now for us to make that commitment to God. Be committed. Jesus was committed. You think that didn't take commitment? For him to know that people go string him up on a cross and nail him. And yet, he submitted himself. Surrendered himself to the point of death. What does it profit a man to gain the world and to lose his soul? What will you sacrifice for Jesus Christ. He has paid it all for us. He died in our place. He conquered death and hell on our behalf. My God. So what is more important? We who are of the body of Christ. Should not be talking like the world. The world does not know God. The world does not accept our Lord. The world are under deceit from the enemy. But we who are of Christ and in the body of Christ should be doing as God wants us to do. The word of God talks about, and I love Revelation 3, 7 to 10, because it tells you, it says, to the church in Philadelphia, right? This is the faithful church. He said, these things says, he who is holy, he who is true, he who has taken the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one's open. I know your works. See, I've set before you an open door and no one can shut it. For you have a little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. When we compromise, we deny Jesus. When we put ourselves before him, we deny him. Denying Jesus is not just saying, oh, I don't believe in Jesus. That's just a talk. Our actions demonstrate daily by what we do that we are denying Christ. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. The word of God said, indeed, I will make those. These are the, these are the faithful. These are those who are sold out to God. These are the wheat and the sheep that Jesus said, my sheep knows my voice and I hear them. And the devil in hell cannot snatch them out of my hands. These are those who love the Lord with all their hearts, mind, soul, and strength. These are those who are not just hearers of the words, but they're doers of the word. These are those who allow the power of God through his Holy Spirit to transform you. This is what God is saying. He said, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan who say they are Jews and are not, but in but lie. Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet. That's the promises of God. He says, and to know that I have loved you. Why? Because you have kept my command to persevere. I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. That 
is for the faithful church of Jesus Christ. The faithful believers of Jesus Christ. So saints of God, saints of God, get it together. Get it together. Spend more time in the word of God. God's word is power. God's word gives authority. If we know the word of God, there is nothing that the devil can come to us with because we understand who we are and we have the word of God. The word of God says we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So we have to live a life for God so that we can testify and people can see it. Testifying is not about open your mouth. You know? That's not the only part of it. That's included. But when people see you, how you live your life, they'll see Christ in you. And by seeing Christ in you, they will want to come to know this Christ. We have work to do, saints. We have work to do. God expects us to do what is right. The word of God in 1 Corinthians 3, 16 to 17, it says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God? Think about that. You are God wants to dwell in us. So we have to keep ourselves undefiled. We got to keep ourselves in the right standing so God's Holy Spirit can dwell in us. It says that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. It is serious, saints of God. For the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? This is the real deal, saints. Psalms 15, 1 to 3, it says, Lord, who may abide in your tabernacle? Who may dwell in your holy hill? He who walks uprightly and works righteousness and speaks the truth in his heart. He who does not backbite with his tongue nor does evil to his neighbor, nor does he take up a reproach against his friend. Isaiah 2 verse 12 says, For the day of the Lord of hosts shall come upon everything proud and lofty, upon everything lifted up, and it shall be brought low. Mm -hmm. We are called, saints of God, to go after God with everything that is within us. We have to make some changes because the time is short. He is coming, he is coming, and we don't know the time or the hour. Jesus told a parable about inviting everyone to a feast because those who were invited didn't want to come. And the word of God said when the banquet hall was open and everyone was gathered, Jesus saw someone who was not in their wedding garment. And he went over and he said, how did you get in here? You're not in the proper garment. And the word of God said that they took out that person and bound them and threw them into utter darkness. Saints of God, we have the time now to get it right. To take, to ask God to, to cleanse us and to, to wash us and to, to refine us, to, to burn out the things that are in us that he's not pleased with, to transform us, to put on the garments of righteousness that are in Christ Jesus. So on that great day, when we stand before his throne, we won't have to worry if we're going to hear depart because we know we have lived a life for him. That we lived a life to serve him. To be obedient to him. Not to compromise. Not to give him leftovers. Not to put our desires before him. We have a call to seek God first. Seek him. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God. Don't seek the career first. Don't seek 
the husband first. Don't seek money. The love of money is the root of evil. So don't even put your eyes on that. Keep your eyes on God. Seek the things of God. Because on that great day, it is those who have kept the faith and have run the, run the race. It is those who have been crucified with Christ. It is those who have done everything to please their father will hear the words, welcome and well done, thou good and faithful servant. Enter into the rest of almighty God. Father God, we give you all the praise, O oh God. And we give you all the glory, Lord. And we thank you, Father, for everything that you have done for us, O oh God. We thank you, God, that you are not finished with us yet, O oh God. And that while we have breath, my God, we have the opportunity, my God, to be transformed into your image and your likeness, my God. Help us, Father, in the areas in which we struggle. You know us, God. We are open books before you. And we're surrendered and willing, oh God, my Lord, to be refined by your Holy Spirit's power and fire, Lord God. That we may do the work, my God, that you have called us to do. No longer do we want to stay in the middle because there is no such thing as the middle. My God, it is either on or either. Either we're on your side. And your word said, those who are not with me are against me. So, Father God, this morning we are with you. We are for you, oh God, and we love you, God. And we're just asking you, Lord Jesus, to wash us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, oh God. Ignite a fire in us, oh God, Lord Jesus, that we may serve you, God, in spirit and in truth. Father God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. Let your word, my God, go forth with power and authority, God, that your people will be resolute to rise up and reject things that are not of you, oh God. Things that are not from you, my God, so that they can live the life of liberty because your word said, who the Son set free, my God, is free indeed and, and you've given us free Jesus, my God, freedom from sin, freedom from death, my God, freedom, Jesus. Oh Lord, we give you, we give you all the praise, Father, and we give you all the glory. Have your way in our hearts, have your way in our souls, oh God. Let your word go forth, my God, without hindrance, my God. Oh Lord, and let every ear and heart that receives your word be never the same, oh God. Cause them, my God, to come after you with everything that is within you. Cause them, God, to seek after you, oh God, like how they seek after water to drink and food to eat. Oh Lord, draw them in, oh God, before it is too late. Oh God, we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In the mighty and matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. amen.